Uh, so I'm Ash Hill and I look after the practice facilities here at Edgebaston Sports Foundation Ground. Yeah, so I've always really enjoyed cricket, playing it. Um, at our local club we used to have a volunteer groundsman and we used to have a, a rotary system um, to help him out um, in the evening. So, so we'd go down, do, a, do some rolling, do some, uh, do some mowing and it kind of went from there really. I um, looked around for um, jobs in, in cricket and stumbled across a job at Worcestershire County Cricket Club um, and thankfully I had a mate who worked there at the time so uh, it, was, it was really good that um, I could uh, call him and just see, uh, see if there's any jobs going. Um, I got an interview in the end and uh, spent five really good years at Worcester. Um, Learned a lot, obviously flooding and um, you know just general practices, uh, how to how to uh, prepare a, a match day wicket, a uh, first class wicket. So yeah, that was really good. Um, and then I subsequently left Worcester to go to um, a golf club, a uh, Redditch golf club. And again, that was really helpful in my development in um, you know stuff like tractor tractor driving, um, attachments to the tractor, so such as verti draining, um, all the different types of attachments you find on a tractor I could, I could do in the two years that I was there, so that was really useful. Um, and then, yeah, I saw the job at, at Warwickshire, and um, obviously I knew Gary from, from my time at Worcester, um, and that was really, really good to be fair. The um, interview went really well, and, and yeah, he offered me the job, um, obviously, during that time it was COVID so um, it, it, did, uh, it was a little broken up but uh, thankfully the club have been really good with me and it was, um, I spent two years at Edgebaston and then um, yeah I got the, got the role here which is great. This year um, I got given the opportunity to, to look after these uh, practice facilities um, here at the Edgebaston Sports Foundation ground. Um, obviously a fantastic opportunity and a fantastic facility um, this place is home to Warwickshire second team and academy age groups as well as the women's side so you've got your Central Sparks and Warwickshire women here. In terms of the facilities we've got here we've got um, 21 uh, grass wickets uh, 12 of which are hybrids so we cut the pitches at six foot um, just so we can get the maximum amount of pitches out for the players um, it's obviously going to be a very busy season up here um, obviously, the Commonwealth Games are at Edgebaston. We've got um, to facilitate uh, the women's side, the second team, and obviously the first team when, when the Commonwealth Games is, is at Edgebaston. So, um, yeah, we've got, to, uh, we've got to facilitate a lot of teams, um, and 12 of, which are, 12 of our pitches are hybrids, and the idea of that is to um, make them last longer. So, obviously, with a busy, busy schedule, we'll be um, looking to uh, get the most out of the pitches as possible. Behind you is um, we've got four artificial bays um, which is obviously the newest spec um, again fantastic uh, facility uh, which gives us uh, players an opportunity to to train in all kinds of weather so um, that's another another bow to our string. So generally on um, second team cricket and women's cricket we we give the players uh, two nets um, but we do have a third to facilitate any more um, if it's you know any more players turn up and you know we've got a, uh, a quite a lot of, of players so uh, we do have that option to to put a third net in um, and generally when the first team are here we got, we'll have to provide three wickets so uh, that'll be in use. Over to our left is the main square um, we've got over 60 days of cricket this year and we've got 12 pitches to facilitate that. So a typical match day for us usually starts about six o'clock in the morning. Um, in terms of my role, I'll head up here to the net area um, and get everything prepared. So that involves um, uncovering the wickets um, and then we'll drop the nets, uh, which is quite time consuming. Um, and we'll get those in place, ready for the players to turn up. We'll then assess the pitch, see what needs doing to it. Um, probably give it a brush. It's uh, this time of year, it's obviously quite quite dewy at the minute so um, we'll give it a brush let it allow it to dry out um, and then take it from there really so this morning for example I gave it a brush uh, gave it a cut and a roll and then um, 
yeah, we, we painted the lines, put the stumps in and away we go. We leave it for the players to to use um, ready for ready for their warm ups, ready for ready for match day. So between innings, uh, we go out, we sweep any debris off the pitch, um, any footholds that need repairing, we do those as well. Um, we'll obviously paint the paint the white lines ready, ready for the players to come back out, uh, nice and bright. Um, and then it's a case of uh, what roller the the players want. So you have a choice of light and heavy roller. Uh, you can only have the heavy roller uh, twice in a game. Um, uh, the rest of the time it's light. So. So after the game uh, here today, we'll, we'll be obviously clearing up any debris um, and then it's a case of pr preparing for the next game. Uh, so we've got it. our next game here is on Tuesday. Uh, we'll be uh, preparing the pitch, so mainly rolling, uh, brushing, stand the grass up. And then it's, um, it's a case of getting as much water into the square as possible because here obviously We've got so much cricket on it going on that we need to utilise any opportunity to, to get some water into the square. Um, and then it's just a, a case of just managing it really. It's um, you know rolling every every now and then. Um, we're pretty much in a good place now, so so we'll we'll be doing that. So in my opinion, to get more people um, into the industry, I think it stems to education. I think we need to um, look into local clubs and schools to really invest in, in what we do. I think a lot of, lot of the time um, we're branded as you know, grass cutters, whereas it's a lot more than that. It's a lot more, um, lot more than we're giving credit for, I think. Um, so I think if we, if we go into the schools um, and educate children, local teams, local kids about what we do, um, I, think it, I think it'll be really beneficial. So my favourite bit of kit is the Alex C34. Um, it's an absolutely amazing machine. It's uh, battery powered, which is obviously great for the environment. Uh, really quiet, we don't have to wear earmuffs, uh, which is great and obviously very comfortable. Um, and you know, it's, it's, it leaves a fantastic finish on the, um, on the outfield. We use it mainly on this run up and um, as you can see, it's, it leaves a lovely stripe. So uh, we're really pleased with it. We've also got a turf rate cartridge, which we use on the square. Um, and that rips out a lot of a lot of debris and organic matter, which is which is great and um, ideal for for up here. So we're really pleased with it. Um, yeah. So this is the Alex shaver. We use this for our wickets. It's a great piece of kit because it cuts down to 2.4 millimeters, um, and it gives a really nice finish. It's a 10 blade cylinder, so it leaves yeah a really good finish. Um, so here we have the Alex Regal 36. Um, this is over 50 years old. Um, again, a brilliant piece of kit. It's so reliable. Uh, we tend to use this mainly on the run-ups, um, and I've actually used this to pre-season roll as well. Um, again, it, it's fantastic. So uh, really reliable, and still going strong. So here we have the Alec Buffalo 27. Uh, we tend to use this for our square. Uh, it's a great piece of kit. Beautiful presentation. Uh, really easy to set up, and. Yeah, so we're pretty well kitted out here at Edgebaston Foundation Ground.